what's up everyone welcome back to our page this video is about an endorsement of a share transfer declaration from a nominee now the exchange control regulations of 1961 regulations were promulgated in terms of the currencies and exchanges act 9 of 1933 this is to regulate the flow of funds into South Africa from external or foreign sources, as well as the outflow of funds from South African residents in South Africa to non-South African residents. In terms of the regulations, natural and juristic persons acquiring ownership of shares in South African companies must obtain a non-resident endorsements on their share certificates now this endorsement application process is handled by the company's business banker authorized dealer the approval of the endorsement is based on the requirements outlined by the reserve bank and the specific dealer some have more stringent regulations than others um, once approved, the original share certificate will receive a stamp at the branch and will hold the unique reference number from the Reserve Bank. This reference number will be used to authorize any funds that travel in or out of the Republic as shareholder loans and or dividends. Now, any foreign held shares that do not reflect the endorsements will not carry the ownership of the company until they have been recognized by the Reserve Bank in this way. South African companies have 30 days from the allotment dates to get foreign shares endorsed. South Africans who are residing or residing outside of the re region will need to formally immigrate and be declared as non-resident. Although the South Africans living abroad retain their citizenship, shareholders will not be considered local by the Reserve Bank if they do not have a valid South African residential address. Consequently, their shares must be endorsed and their immigration status formalized. Now, submissions for non-resident endorsements. The regulations provide that within 30 days of a natural or juristic person purchasing or subscribe, subscribing for shares in a South African company, their share certificates must be submitted to an authorized dealer. Along with the following information that I will be discussing, which is the name and the country of residence of the foreign acquirer, together with a declaration of non-resident the name of the South African company in which the shares are being, are being acquired. The total number of shares being acquired as well and the name and residential address of the person who is in possession of such shares. Once the authorized dealer has satisfied itself with its assessments of the submission, it will affix a non-resident stamp to the relevant share certificate. Now, consequences of non-compliance is that the non-resident endorsement is more of a formality than an application. However, failure to obtain this endorsement will mean that the non-resident shareholder will not be permitted to repatriate or repatriate any sale proceeds or dividends or other distributions is in respect of the South African company until it has successfully been granted condemnation from the South African Reserve Bank. If there is any South African interest in the foreign entity that is the sole or partial owner of a local company, this will also need to be recognized due to the controls around external looping structures. Although the Reserve Bank has eased this slightly, there is still a restriction to South Africans owing equity or having voting rights in a foreign parents of a South African entity of up to 40% from October 2019. If the ownership exceeds 40%, the Reserve Bank will decline the endorsement and the shareholding will not be valid and the funds will not be allowed to arrive or leave the Republic as shareholder loans or dividends. Where a non-resident acquires securities in this particular instance, shares in a resident company either by way of a subscription for a new issue of shares in that the resident company or a sale and transfer of existing shares the funds which are paid across by the non-resident for the acquisition will be held back by the resident's company or the selling shareholders 
bank until such time as the required documents are provided by the resident company and or the selling shareholder to the authorized dealer normally the residence bank for approval and the release of those funds in addition to the approval required for the release of the inward flowing funds in accordance with the regulations when the non or when a non resident purchases shares in a resident entity certain specific and additional documentary evidence will be required to be produced to an authorized dealer before the funds will be approved for release as well as for purposes of facilitating identification of controlled shares shares registered in the name of a non-resident now practically in addition to the requirements that i've discussed set out in the regulations most authorized dealers will require the following information or documentation which is a declaration on an official letterhead of the resident company that the beneficial owner of the shares is permanently resident outside of the common monetary area alternatively confirming that he is an immigrant or his immigrant status the declaration should also confirm that the funds being introduced into south africa do not form part of a resident's foreign investment allowance foreign earnings foreign earnings foreign inheritance or funds for which amnesty has been granted or in respect of a voluntary disclosure program and that there is no south african interest in the non-resident this is to identify and prevent the so-called loop structures in the case of an individual non-resident a copy of their passports and a written declaration confirming that they were never resident in south africa or details of their immigration from south africa would be required if a non-resident entity of that entity <laughs> A resolution of the board of directors of residence company authorizing the equity investment transactions the agreements in terms of which the equity investment is being made for example a shareholders agreement funding agreement funding agreement sorry sale of shares agreements or subscription agreements an independent auditor's written confirmation that the transaction was concluded at arm's length and at a fair market related price illustrating the basis upon which the value of the transaction was determined the latest annual financial statements of the resident company organogram of the resident company including the full names of the shareholders domiciles and percentage of shareholding in the case of a transfer of shares the existing original share certificate as well as the new original share certificate in the case of a subscription for shares the new original share certificate and a copy of the securities register and the share transforms and the share transfer forms where applicable and the resident company's registration and incorporation documents that is it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed it if you do want to know more about this then do go to our website www.lawyers.easyfind.co.za also do follow us on all our social media platforms such as facebook and instagram and twitter and also do give this video a thumbs up subscribe to our youtube channel click on the bell button for post notifications and stay tuned for more videos like this